This is Young Black And, a podcast bringing light to the Black artist experience in Charlotte and beyond. We're your hosts, Bree and Tracy. Hello, Bree. How you doing? Hey, Tracy. What is up? How's your week been? My week has been good. Um, what's today? Wednesday. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Friday, of course, the day that we drop the podcast <laughs> episode. No, it's it, for real. It's, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Um, honestly, I've just been unpacking as much as I can, enjoying my apartment. Yeah. Um, so uh, we got to we got to see the um, the slightly better version of your yes. apartment last week. Yes. And my apartment was actually presentable. Yeah. Not a lot of boxes. But yeah. it was pretty dope. Was yeah. Pretty dope. We had a lot of fun. What else is new? I'm just enjoying every day being on summer vacation because I am a teacher, so not having to get up and deal with little humans. <laughs> um, it's quite beautiful right now. I can imagine. Just I a lot of imagine. Netflix and chill. Yeah. What's going on with you? How are you? I am doing well. I've had a lot of auditions this week and got a couple of callbacks, notifications of some callbacks for some things that I auditioned for, so I'm pretty excited about that. And also booked a couple of small things. So that's exciting, just, you know, a little little bit of work to make me feel validated as an actor. Yes. Us actors need constant validation like we that. We do. We're very needy. Yes. So emotional. So we are getting ready to present to you our recent interview with Rory Sheriff. The Rory Sheriff. Yeah, he is our producer. He is the producer of the Eclipsed play. And he is with Brand New Sheriff Productions. He's actually the leader or the head of the organization. Right. So we sat down with Rory and we asked him all kinds of questions. And uh, he had some really fun and interesting answers. So we he got had some to, great answers. Yeah. We got to know Rory, Rory pretty well. His name is hard to say. Rory. I can't say it at all. So Rory. <laughs> Rory. <laughs> I, yeah, that's not my strong suit. <laughs> yeah. So without further ado, enjoy this interview with Rory Sheriff of Brand New Sheriff Productions. So, well, first, I have a, a tendency if you tell me no, I'm going to make it happen. I will definitely define your no. I'll raise your no. So I, I, I had a, a publishing company first, which was Brand New Chef Publishing. My writing started out with books, and I was penning uh, a couple novels. I penned like five novels, and some publishing houses wasn't taking my books. So I published my own self. I started a publishing company that published just me, <laughs> so, which was Brand New Sheriff Publishing. So, you know, I always was a writer since high school through college and the military and whatnot. I was writing a script, and my agent at the time got me in front of producers, Hollywood producers, to sell the script. So this script was called Be a Lion. Be a Lion originally was a screenplay. Got in front of these producers, and I had five minutes to pitch the script, and I pitched the hell out of it. It was a gay guy, a white girl, and a sister. The gay guy tuned out like fast. He was just checked out with my pitch. So I lost him. So I had two females to work. The white girl, she was like really, really interested in. So I I knew I had her in the pocket. So I was trying to work the sister. I was getting the feed like, I'm only going to look at you because you're a brother. And I'm not going (laughs) to shut you down. I mean, uh, I get it. We got this communication. But great pitch, ultimately. They uh, did not buy the script. I had that script sold, and I was counting the money when I was getting there, and they shut me down. Ultimately, they ended up buying another script that I wrote, which I thought was trash. Mm -mm. (laughs) I really did. I was like, man, this is my worst writing, and they they bought it. But it was for a fraction of what I thought Be Alive was worth. So as I was leaving, the white lady rushes out of the room to catch me. She's like, wait. As I turned around, I said, I knew this girl was feeling me. Turned around and felt like the slow motion music come in, the slow love music, romance stuff. And she's like, "Uh, did you ever consider putting this on stage? In my mind, I was like, I thought you wanted me, white lady. (laughs) I thought you was going to help me. But I was like, you know what, let me consider that. And, you know, when I got on a plane to come back to Charlotte, I was like, yeah, this might be dope to put Be A Line on stage. And... I remember my passion for theater, my love for theater, and everything came back. And I was like, all right, cool, let me do a stage reading. 
and BNS Productions was launched from there. And this happened uh, a little over six years ago. You said your love for theater was reignited. Where was that born? Uh, it was born in high school, probably even before then, because I remember that one of the first shows that I went was like South Pacific and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and A Fiddler on the Roof, all, all those kind of plays that didn't have people who look like me in them, but I loved the movement and whatnot. But the, the love really came. I would go to New York as a kid, spend my summers in Brooklyn with my family. I would often like travel throughout the city by myself. So one time I was inside the city, I was down in Manhattan and I was walking around Broadway. I said, yeah, I heard a lot about Broadway, but I didn't know what it was. All right, so walking around Broadway and off Broadway pretty much, and this crew of people these weird people were celebrating. It was like, hey, come see our show, you know, and here's a ticket, you know, come see it. And I was like, all right, cool. So, you know me, I'll, I'll go see a free show. And that free show was Rent. And, and it was the original actors, you know, in Rent. And I was like, oh, shit, I saw them on, on, on the street, you know, giving me tickets and like, come see our show, you know. And, you know, I was like, yeah, this is cool. So, you know, I knew about the playwrights, uh, a lot of black playwrights. I knew about them. But that love just took it to the next level with just that encounter with the cast of Rent. I, I just fell back in love with theater. I created Be a Lion. So you started with Be a Lion and then you just sort of took it from there? Yeah. Um, I still, I just wanted to write. I tell myself, I am a writer. I don't want to do <laughs> nothing else. I write. That's it. The business part and all this kind of stuff, I don't want to do. And every time I tell myself I don't want to do something, I find myself in a position that I have to learn something new. I love business. I have managed and I have produced shows on, on a major scale before. So all of that stuff was just, it was just a perfect combination, like a perfect situation to, to just evolve into BNS Productions. This is our fifth year. This is our fifth season. So why Eclipse? Why Eclipse? I love black women. I love everything about a sister. I have three black sisters. I have a black mother. <laughs> I have a ton of black aunts and cousins. <laughs> and I have a black wife. It's only right to, when you remove yourself and everything that you learn about, learn that you should be about being a man, you remove all that and then you look at the struggle of the black women. It's easy to do a piece like Eclipse. It's so easy for me to do Eclipse. I'm a mom, a uh, single mom, so you know I know the challenge of black women. And why not? Actually, this season is highlighted. We have a theme of the African-American female. So we are doing African-American director, female directors or African-American female shows. The show after this is two female African-American females, uh, which is um, having our say. So that's, that's my theme. I knew I wanted to do that. I knew I wanted to be a part of the black girl magic in any way that I can. I love the movement. I love what it's doing. So whenever I can be a cheerleader for, have the opportunity to say, you go girl, or you go black girl, you make it happen, I would step in and do that. How did you find Dee and connect her to this project? Ah, so Dee has been with me for a couple uh, productions, and we, we have our rap parties and stuff, and we're just having conversation, and Corliss Hayes mentioned that, you know, Dee directed before, and I was like, really? So, you know, I kind of like picked her brain, what, interviewed her. Uh, I just don't want to turn over something as big as Eclipse just to anyone, mm -hmm. um, just because you're a sister. I, I need to know that mm -hmm. you're going to make this thing happen and give it as just to. So, you know, I grilled her a little bit. Uh, she's like, yeah, you know, and just in her humble voice. And, mm -hmm. and, and she's humble yet confident. Like, you know, it's like, brother, look, if you want me, you're going to get me. You're going to get all of me. So, you know, if not, you know, let's not waste each other's time, you know. So, you know, I had to take her to that point to see if she was the right one for this. You know, I really, really love working with Dee uh, with the costumes and whatnot. And 
I, I'm really digging her style as far as directing. So mm -hmm. I made the right decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you hope for the end results to be when the audience walk out? I want them to feel what I felt when I saw Eclipse. That whole wow. Wow. I mean, you, you're really speechless at the end uh, when you go for this whole ride with Eclipse and you learn about these five women and they're all different and they're challenging. They go through so many di uh, different situations that we, w we take for granted uh, as Americans and they're going through so much like it's nothing. And then, I don't want to give away the end, but at the end, it's, it's just moving. I literally had tears in my eyes uh, at the end seeing the girl, number four. I want them to walk away uh, learning a lot about Liberia. I, I want them to walk away respecting Liberia for the country that it is and for its people and how it became a country. Uh, I want them to walk away knowing the history of the civil wars and of course the food and you know the different you know I want them to even want to learn more about Liberia most importantly I want them to be speechless and ignited to to learn more about Liberia so what is the role of a producer ah the role of the producer is most commonly known as the money person the producer has the biggest headaches and stress out of all productions letting the world know that we're doing Eclipse pretty much uh, making sure that we have uh, the press releases the media and making sure that uh, the theaters paid for that the venues paid for were covered with through insurance and all the legal issues uh, that we have licensing for Eclipse we have the permission to do this pretty much overseeing every aspect that make this thing run uh, and down to the tech and choosing, like hiring everybody mm -hmm. to, to make this happen. So. so typically, most productions take about six to eight weeks. We auditioned in April, but the show doesn't open until August. So like, what made you guys decide, well, pretty much take the summer before opening, like a four-month period? Good question. Um, me and Dee talked about Eclipse. And you're right, typically six to eight weeks. You, you, you know, you take eight weeks, that's including the auditions and the callbacks, and then you go right into rehearsal. We know the seriousness of this piece. We know how important this story is and how important it is to get it right. So there's a little bit more pressure on us as black people to deliver a piece like Eclipse and not just to deliver it. Typically with, with a play or a musical, you learn the songs, you learn the, the script, and you're off book uh, two, three weeks. Um, but there's so much more that we wanted to make sure that you guys have. Uh, we wanted to make sure that you guys have the culture down. The character development, you can't get that in six weeks. Uh, you can probably come and do a good, rendition of those um, voices and, and bringing those characters to life, but you need more time to, to learn what cassava and learn how to make cassava, learn how to walk, learn how to really, really talk and embody uh, these characters. We felt that six to eight weeks is not enough time to, to do something like that. We wanted you guys to, to gel, uh, to, to get that chemistry together, both on stage and off stage. I don't want to put any pressure on you guys, but uh, the, the truth is you guys are going to be judged on how you deliver a Liberian voice. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is an audience that's outside of my typical demographics. Uh, we're bringing in a whole new audience, and, and it's an African audience, and they don't play. It's, imagine if you're going if you in France and they're doing uh, American peace mm -hmm. with American voices, and you live there, but you're from America, and, and you better do, you better bring it, you know. You're doing Charlotte voices. You know what a Charlotte voice sounds like. You know what an American voice sounds like. So you want these characters to be authentic, and, and that's what we did. We know how important this piece is. It has so many stories, uh, so many underlines, and, 
oh my God, it's just amazing. So we, we wanted to make sure we get it right. And I agreed with D. It was D's idea. As far as the audition process itself, what were you looking for in the women who were coming to audition? I had to remove what I saw with Broadway and I had to remove what I saw with the Atlanta show. I knew I wanted that intensity and that was most important to me to find women that can bring it, that's not afraid to go there. I mean, really dig out those taboo moments. And that meant everything to me because, you know, there's so many, so many taboo moments and conversations and things that's happening that, you know, a lot of those girls at audition was not comfortable with doing because I'm really, really intense when it, when it comes to casting. I think I have a, a really cool eye for, for casting. So, What do you look for in an actor specifically that gives you that, like that feeling that you're talking about? Instantly, I'm attracted to confidence. And then you got to prove that confidence with talent. This is my shit. I'm an actor. I'm not even looking at your resume yet. As you start your monologue and acting, if you're really, really good and interesting, I was like, I got in my mind, I was like, okay, this girl's good. She's going to another round. And so I'll start reading and I'll write, take some notes. And then I'll just finish listening or watching you uh, finish your audition. And of the women that you and Dee saw come through, were you guys on the same page or was there any um, difference of opinion? Yeah, we were in agreement, I would say 80% of the time. As a producer, I kind of uh, yield to what a director is seeing and I listen to the director because sometimes as a producer, it, I can be a little emotional and I want to remove myself, especially like a director is D, you know, especially all, all female cast. D has that eye like, uh-uh, no. So she, she's that wake up, she's that balance. And, you know, ultimately I'm going to yield to my director because that's why I hired her. What made this particular cast stand out from the rest of audition? Oh, wow. So you guys, you guys were hitting some of those lines and nailing them like I pictured them to be, be hit. Where I was like, yeah, that's it, that's it. Because I had notes for all of you guys and, and our notes, it matched up. Would you say that auditions were more than what you expected? Was it more than what we anticipated? It was there. It was there. Uh, it was really, really good. So I would say, yeah, it was a little more, more than what we did, what we anticipated. You know, it was a lot of people, but they weren't, a lot of them didn't stick out. But it was some really, really interesting folks, and it was some, uh, some talented young ladies that I would love to work with in the, in the near future. There's some that I wrote a star by, their bios, and I keep it in uh, my files. What advice would you give to someone who is looking to try to get into becoming a producer? <laughs> uh, I would not advise anyone to be a producer at all. Run, 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 run. Um, I guess, you know, you have to have some thick skin. You got to be able to have compassion. And at the same time, you got to be able to call bullshit when you see it. You gotta be compassionate, and you gotta have passion, and have that listening ear, and be willing to work and understand people, but at the same time, be able to call bullshit when you see bullshit, and just just like have that backbone. No, that's bullshit. You gotta go. I love you though. Love you, mean it. What's coming up next? Cool. So we got full season up next. We got having our say. Uh, the Delaney sisters. We got that in October, and then we have Be a Lion, which is our holiday piece. I just inked the deal for Boys to Baghdad. I was going to take Boys to Baghdad off to 2020, but Boys to Baghdad is going to Birmingham, Alabama hey, nice. in November. After that, two trains running, August Wilson, and then we have Jitney for August Wilson. Where can people find you online? BNS Productions. You can go to the website, brandnewsheriff.com, or you can just look me up on my name. Rory Sheriff or at BNS Productions or, or at Brand New Sheriff Productions. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. This is cool. Super dope. Thank you guys for having me. Young, Black, and Cultured. Young, Black, and Cultured is a segment we use to highlight up and coming events and productions of Black artists in Charlotte.
make sure you check out Blood Ties, a staged reading event presented by the Legacy Theater Production Company, July 21st, 2018 at 7 p.m. at NOTA at 28th Creative Arts Studio. Tickets available on Eventbrite. Want to support Young Black and financially? Visit our Patreon page at Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Young Black and. No spaces, and is spelled out. And if you're interested in sponsoring an episode, email us at youngblackandtb, that's T as in Tracy and B as in Brie, at gmail.com. Again, that's youngblackandtb at gmail.com. Thanks for the love, you guys. That's all for this episode of Young, Black, And. If you've enjoyed this episode, give us five stars and a review on iTunes. We'd love to hear from you. Also follow us on Instagram at youngblack underscore and, that's A-N-D underscore, or follow us on Facebook at Young Black And. If you have an upcoming event or you'd like for us to spotlight a Black artist, message us on Facebook or on Instagram. Bye!